you know, as a child, for you, the fun is to play in the, in, in the street with your kids and go do whatever you have to do. So going to the shop wasn't the best fun. My father wanted me there, and yes, he pressurized me to do that. But then a lot of times I enjoyed that experience of meeting different nationalities from the Indians and the Pakistanis and the Iraqis and the Syrians and, and so forth. And that was a fun part of it. My father was very entrepreneurial. You know, he would look what the market wants and where the margin is better than the commodity. I remember Coty lipstick, which today Coty is one of the biggest company in cosmetics, Rolex watches, Parker pen, and vest and shoes, and it was very mixed. His biggest trading was in China. In 1961, my father went to China, not speaking a word of English apart from Chinese, communism regime, they invited him because he was one of the biggest traders with them. And at the time, China was communist, was very close. You could not go to China. But he got the invitation. It was an experience for him to go to China, where I think he probably was one of the first people in 1961 from Middle East or UAE to visit China. Me being the oldest son, the entire focus was on me. The entire focus was me to be in the shop, to be learning. I remember when I was 14 years old and my father went for a holiday to Iran, taking the entire family, my four siblings, my mother, my grandfather, my grandmother. And I spent 45 days running four shops at the age of 14. That was a, really an experience. And then when he came back, he kept the family back in Iran and I have to go and bring them and visit two, three cities. And when I think of it today, how did he trust me to do that? Because I went to Shiraz and Isfahan and Tehran, you know, and all those three cities without, you know, credit card, without a mobile, without, you know, much of experience in life to do that. See, so far in the interview, I've been smiling. Now you need to cry, because when I remember my mother, it's a different memories. I was a first child, and always mother with a first boy, she's close. Because of going to the shop, in my relationship, my father was a bit stiff. She always felt to compensate with that. And of course, now with her age, and she's quite sick, but I was very, very close to her, beyond your thinking. And until a few years ago, until she became very sick, I was her favorite, and no question, the love, it was amazing. The care was amazing. Naturally, time elapsed, time is different. So I think from my point of view, I treated Ali much better than my father treated me, from trying to convince him, trying to talk to him, trying to work with him to come to the office. Or during my father's time was more instruction. I'm sure Ali will not think the same way when he treats his oldest son now, or his first son is Muhammad. And I'm sure Ali, if he's here 30 years down the road and talking about his experience with his son Muhammad, he will say, I treated him better than my father. But that's normal. That's the generation gap, and that's how the world moves. You know, having said and done all that, I would have probably listened a little bit more to my father because the relation was come to the shop, and then I would just want to go one day and I want to go one day. Uh, rarely I ask him about his advice, his views of the world, you know? And uh, of course, he was a very busy trader, but today I would have, well, if it goes back, I would get closer to him to learn from his experience. From my father, I learned discipline, hardworking, going to the detail of your work, and respecting time and discipline. From my mother, I learned love and forgiveness. And my advice to everybody, is forgive, forgive. Because if you don't forgive, you're hurting yourself other than hurting the others. But if you can forgive, you feel better and you move forward.